stakeholder framework. Words aren't so good here, so I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview here and then I'm going to get you up out of your seats over to the wall over there. So this stakeholder framework looks a bit like what? Public participation. IAP2, and, and there is reason for that, because I thought that made such a good idea that I would try and frame up and map stakeholders using that. What is along the bottom is the, the purpose um, or the, and the promise. So this is the promise to you if you're going to participate. And the wording in here depends on the project. What I thought was useful, and this, this was an, an innovation out of the process, is that we also put a clear expectation of school stakeholders. So yes, we promise to keep you informed in a timely manner with relevant information. Our expectation is that you will make the time to read or understand what is being communicated to you. Right the way through to uh, along here. And that came from the, look, it's fine if we as a school make a promise, but we need you to be participating in this. And if we go to our Treaty of Waitangi principles, partnership relationships, participation, and protection. We wanted to make it really explicit. This is the partnership we're talking about. It can't just be us up here communicating to you, inviting you in. We need you to respond, we need you to engage in this. Does that make sense? This is on a Word document, and if I get you to mm. click one more, this is what it looks like. This is what it looked like for the Aranui Community Campus Dialogue early on. So if you are not familiar, the ministry responded to the community saying, we want to, we want to be partners in this. The minister determined, actually, that's a fair call. And she enabled a community leadership group to be constituted by the community with the ministry and those schools. So that became the partnership. Then that group identified the key stakeholders to be involved early and meaningfully in the process, broken down into three groups, the governance boards of each of the schools, as well as the, um, the Christchurch City Council, Burwood Pegasus Community Board and Actus, which is the local organisation, that's the Aranui Community Trust. So that was a governance level engagement. These were four advisory groups, which some of you will be aware of. So that was the Education Advisory Board under the Ministry, the Waitaha Advisory Board, Pasifika, um, and uh, the Ngaitahu, which became mm, Maturaka Mahanui. Mahanui. As well as other key education stakeholders. So I'm thinking, Steve, how you might chuck this down. It, will, it could look something like this. Then, the, this was the responsible group for developing, well, this is the high level. This is the process. This is what we think at a high level. What do you all think about this? And we kept all those people informed. So actually, we kept everyone that side informed. So we had a database, we had a project manager resource. So there's quite a lot of comms going on here, internal and external. So that's a Word document. Just notice I just used that template and we ended up populating that right down to individuals. So we knew who the individuals were. And if we go one more click, this is the register where we named every organisation, individual, their role, their phone number, their email address, 
and relevant notes. That's an Excel spreadsheet, just for simplicity. So we'll get you these templates because they might be useful. And then if, as we step down, can you just flip back one? So yellow partners, green and involved, key stakeholders, other stakeholders. Can you go forward now, Janelle? Yellow partners, green key stakeholders, and stakeholders to consult and inform. So we've tried to be, this is project management <coughs> discipline sort of coming in here. Do you think that'll be useful?